Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're at the Hotel Nico in downtown San Francisco, International Women's Day. Accenture's putting on a big event today. It's called Getting to Equal, about 400 executives, the packed house in the, uh, in the little conference area. So we're excited to sit down with some of the leadership team and talk about some interesting research that Accenture's come out with, and also just talk to some terrific guests. And we're excited by our first guest. She's Jennifer uh, Cabo Quinto. She's the CFO of the Golden State Warriors. Jennifer, great to see you. Thank you. And joined by Mike Sutcliffe. He's a group chief executive for Accenture Digital. Great to see you, Mike. Great to be here. All right, so let's just jump into it. We're a little short on time and got a packed schedule. But I want to jump in, Jennifer, with you and culture. Yeah. Talk about the culture at the Golden State Warriors. I think it's such a phenomenal example that we can all see. We can't see in lots of other companies, but with a professional sports franchise, we can see what a top-down culture change when the change of management happened, sure. when, when Joe and Peter came in, and how they've been able to, to change the culture, but then also drive that through all the way down through all the various operations. Yeah, no, we've really been fortunate. Our ownership group has been so supportive and they really want us to succeed and they gave us all the resources to do it. And they, they've really brought that sort of Silicon Valley um, leadership style and fast fail and really make us push to be innovative and to grow. I love, you know, they, they brought on Bob Myers as our general manager for the basketball operations side, and he always says that he recruits for character first and then tall, because you can't teach tall. But <laughs> character is really something that I think we, as part of the whole organization, really focuses on is that, you know, it's that are we all willing to be a team and have that sort of drive together? Right. And uh, Joe and Peter embody that from the top down and, and I think it really permeates. And it's really our desire to be innovative and to drive this business both on the basketball side and on the business side. And what's interesting, I mean, they're good guys, but they're not doing it to be good guys. They're doing it to win. I mean, it's a competitive <laughs> sure. business that we can all watch the winners and losers. Oh, it's yeah. a business decision for better business. That's exactly right. And you know, they, they really do want to win, they're, they're competitive, and every single person I think in the organization is competitive. Right. But I, I think they want to win in the right way, and um, and I think you can see it in the way that we approach both the basketball side and the business side. Um, really wanting to, you know, I think do do I think the community the best that we can. I mean, I think we really want to reflect our, our community as well as our business partners, and and really you know, succeed together. Right. Yeah. So Mike, you're out in the field, you talked to a lot of customers. I mean, do people get it? Do, do people get that diversity of opinions, points of views, teams, isn't just to do the right thing, it's actually to drive better business outcomes. I think they do. I mean, one of the reasons we were attracted to work with the Warriors is, uh, you know, they were looking not just to change their game, but to change the community that they were involved in. We see lots of clients with the same aspiration. They're trying to figure out how to improve the way the world works and lives. And so if you want to improve the way the world works and lives, you've got to have diversity of thought people with different educational backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, different experiences, who can look at those really tough problems and say, there's a better way. Right. And that's where we think diversity brings power, that diversity of experience, allowing you to come up with new solutions. So Jennifer, just from a woman's perspective, being in, a, in obviously a very male-dominated world, of course, sure. a lot of the tech companies around here are as well. Um, you know, how, did, how are you attracted to this industry? You know, kind of what was your experience going in knowing that you were going to be in the minority in terms of the executives right. around the table? And how did you, how did you overcome? You know, I, I am one of five children. I have four brothers, two older, two younger, um, and raised in Brooklyn. I like to think that I've been competing with boys my entire life. <laughs> And I think my environment sort of gave me a tough skin. So I don't look at it in that lens. I didn't approach the job thinking I'm the only woman or I'm one of a handful of women. Um, I really approached the job saying I can make a difference in this organization and to help drive and bring a new perspective to the sports industry. It was my sp first sports job. I was out of entertainment space and not really the sports entertainment world. And I really thought that I could bring a different perspective. And I think you know the ownership saw the same thing. And, and that's why I came aboard and I think not filtering anything that I do with the lens of I'm a woman, right. um, I think really makes a difference in, in terms of how I approach the role and then how other people you know, sort of receive that. Right, 
So that said, for the for the for the gals that weren't raised in Brooklyn with four brothers <laughs> fighting for food at the table probably since you were a little kid, you know, what advice would you give them? I mean, yeah. is it just there's some really great advice coming out of the out of the panel in terms of just focus on data, focus on results, right. you know, right. raise your hand. What advice would you give to, you know, say young women, say a junior in college, a senior in college, first years out, who want to get started and are attracted to a traditionally male dominated space? Sure. I, I think one, don't self edit. Like, no, you can succeed in that space. Just because it's male-dominated doesn't mean that it needs to always be that way. I also think you have to be great at what you do. I mean, it's performance first, I think, in any any industry. And so when you can when you can actually have the confidence in your abilities, I think it starts to show through. And then people, you know, I think respond to that. So I think perform really, really well. Be deliberate about what you want. Ask for what you want. Set your rules. Um, you know, I think all of that is really important. Find your voice. All right. Well, we could go on and on, yeah. and uh, I want to continue this later at the San Antonio game this evening, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make that work out. But we got to drop. Okay. So we'll leave it Sounds there. Good. Jennifer, we'll Mike, there. thanks for taking a few good minutes. Good to see you today. All right. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Accenture International Women's Day celebration in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.